Hi, my name is Ant. I recently returned from the Embedded World conference. In this video, I will try to tell you what interesting AI accelerator are in fashion now. My channel already has three interviews from this exhibition. Uh, they are with representatives from Accelera AI, Sim AI, and STM32. So check them because it seemed to me that in this interview you will be able to find quick answer on the topics. What are these boards for the AI developer? In this video, I will discuss other platforms that were represented on this exhibition and my perception of how the market for AI accelerators works right now. So, first observation. The market began to turn its face to developers. It doesn't appear everywhere, but overall everything has become better. PyTorch. Much hardware developers has begun to support it more or less natively. You, for a lot of project, you don't need to export your network in the ONNX, then solve the puzzle with NMS and then export it to the platform directly. You don't need to use TensorFlow Lite because no one understands TensorFlow these days. So they just released, a lot of vendors released some libraries that you can directly connect to your PyTorch and directly export your models. FP16. Many companies claim that int8 is all you need. But of course it's not true. Int8 is a limitation. Some networks may not export because of int8. Of course it's clear that FP16 affects speed and the price of the device. But I would like to be able to run some networks without int8. And there are a lot of stuff to this right now. Like, for example, Jetson from NVIDIA makes fallback some layers on the GPU. The same approach was used on by STM32 and by a few different companies. Someone like Accelera or for example Rockchip, they allow you to run your network in FP16 at least partially. And in my opinion it's also a good solution. Third point. Tutorials. A lot of examples. Companies start to understand that simplicity, clarity and communication with users are important. So, most large companies agreed to interview with me, for example, which also speak of this openness. Companies now have adequate data, data scientists inside them. So, and it helps a lot because when companies start thinking how to give these data scientists instruments to solve their problems, it became easier for everyone. And on this exhibition, I speak with a lot of them. It was super interesting. And yes, I right now I can see that the companies that develop in, uh, like NPU chips, they starting to understand this problem. Okay. The second observation on this exhibition is that the Jetson monopoly is almost broken. Like... For example, five years ago, almost all AI devices, it was Jetson or if you are risky, take Intel, like Intel Nuke or something like this. But nowadays, like, yes, Jetsons are most popular device as embedded inference device, but it's not a monopoly right now. You can find a lot of different devices like Intel, Halo, Qualcomm, and so on and so on. And the third important observation, uh, foundation models started to appear in real edge production. I already predict this like half year ago or so, 
and it's cool that I can see this right now. There are some cases, it's more, right now it's more like demo cases or toy cases, but it's already interesting. So, let's switch context a bit and let's talk a little about the specific uh, hardware, what is new, what is interesting, and like, my emotion from this exhibition. I will not speak about Intel and video. They don't attend such exhibitions, they already fully represented, you can find them on each third booth, so let's not discuss them. In my opinion, Halo and Qualcomm are the most represented AI platform besides NVIDIA and Intel. I worked with both of them, and they are both good. Also, they have different problems, different questions when you start working with them. them. On this exhibition, Hyla represents a new LLM inference device. It's pretty nice. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but it looks nice. It has 8 gigabytes of memory on board. I hope that there will be some new libraries to support all this LLM stuff, so interesting and nice. Qualcomm line also look nice. Recently we had a debate about uh, whether it's possible to use Ubuntu with Python on Qualcomm, and yes, I saw its work on a few booths and it's also pretty interesting was pretty interesting for me, because Qualcomm is like super mega uh, big giant company and you and the communication with data scientists probably not so great that it can be, but at least there are a lot of instruments, a lot, a lot of approaches. I hear that they like will start uh, releasing the dev boards pretty soon, so it's really look nice. The next competitor uh, beside Hela and Qualcomm, in my opinion, it's Sima AI and Accelera AI that I already mentioned and I have interview with them. So, but, but of course it's debatable because you can say like NXP or you can say it like uh, Texas Instruments and so, but in my opinion right now it's probably look like this. So, next topic. Mm. Let's talk a little about very silicon because in my opinion it's pretty interesting player. This player is already like uh, six year on market. I don't know about it, how long they release the NPU devices, but uh, very silicon is a company that sells architectures from. The videos on my channel, an example of such board with very silicon architecture, it was Hades Vim 3. Uh, there is so far known project with um, very silicon architectures, for example, like MLogic, Broadcom, NXP. And the only participant from these old vendors on the show was NXP. But there were also new releases from STM32 and Synaptic. Both companies say that they made the inference on top of their silicon hardware, uh, but it will be interesting to look how this is designed, because on previous uh, generation all inference was made through Team VX libraries, there was some limitation, problem of inferences libraries. Of course, there were some players like Hados uh, who created a good library on the top of this Team VX library. Uh, of course, there was like open source project like Me Mes Mesa, I don't remember, I put uh, this on the screen. And um, it's allow you to use like very silicon NPU pretty efficient, but it will be super interesting to look and to play with real software from STM32 and Synaptics and to look on how it's work like. Unlike NXP, I didn't find anyone and 
NXP booths who understood how their NPU is work and how it's used. I asked, can someone tell me about like libraries, uh, model expert? And the most I heard was ask our partners who produce hardware on our chipset. I asked a few partners and they said, no, NXP just gave us libraries and we just run them. We don't understand how does this work. So NXP, in my opinion, it's one of the bad experience of this exhibition because no one understands nothing. So let's talk a bit about other serious platforms, but also where my experience was not so great. Uh, it's not about like platform and so on. Like for example, there was Texas Instruments, MediaTek and Rock Chips on the exhibition. And unfortunately I couldn't find a uh, technical expert at the MediaTek and Rock Chip stands. Both uh, tried to answer my question. Uh, both promised to connect me with experts who could answer my question, but this hasn't happened so far. Uh, and Tejas Instrument had such an expert at the exhibition, but he, I couldn't catch him. He was super busy. So I tried to ask a lot of questions about Tejas Instrument, but there was no clear answer. So probably I need to buy Beagle Bone board and to look this myself, but let's leave it as it is. Also, I want to mention that MediaTek was completely beyond my uh, comprehension as an NPU chip manufacturer. Uh, they claim that they have them and they claim that they are pretty fast. Here is like the numbers. It's super interesting to test. Does anyone have good guides or an example of such good platform? please send it to me because it's like a big blank point for me. Rockchip introduced a new board. Uh, it has the same NPU as 3588 bus, but a much smaller processor and this board is much cheaper. Very interesting. They also released a framework for inference of LLM models. Right now where when I write in this video, it has like 50 stars on GitHub. So pretty interesting to test it maybe in future. And speaking of some big companies, I only know about that there was sci five stand, but I didn't find anyone on the stand. And so let's talk a few words about very simple chips that was on exhibition for neural network inference. Tiny ML and the round, but I don't know where the borders of tiny ML go. Such chips are rarely good for computer vision, but they can proceed much simpler task. And for sometimes for computer vision, some simple computer vision, they are also good. I will start with analog devices. Their new chip for ML is MAX7830. After my question, they suddenly give me this as present. And of course, there will be some um, overview on my channel. So I decide not to ask them for interview because in my opinion, it's pretty interesting to test this myself. Uh, I was really looking forward to talking to Brainchip since they looked something between Edge AI and TinyML, but everyone on the stand was super busy all the time. Only one time I can speak with someone who, like technical expert, uh, and after three minutes he go away for some uh, pr presentation or something like this. So. I don't have any information about this brain chip and devices based on it. Super interesting. Also at the, at the exhibition there was Green Wave Technologies, uh, the uh, authors of GAP8 and GAP9. However, GAP9 is 
only for audio and GAP8 is already six years old and a bit outdated in my opinion. Um, I tried to interview Inaterok with their Spike Nero processor. It seems that this is interesting only because someone uh, has like uh, perfected the mathematics that was competitor mathematics to uh, convolutional neural networks more than 10 years ago, but they refused an interview, so there will be no discussion about spike neural processors and stuff like this. Also, I need to mention that there was Nordic Semiconductor, but I didn't have enough time to talk to them, they were on the end of my list. So, I hope you found it this hour really interesting and subscribe on my channel and we meet on one of the next videos. I think it will be Milk V5. Okay, thank you, goodbye.